Hi, I'm Alex Paulton. and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of uh, Talking Time Pieces. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Omega Polaris. Now, lately with the uh, moon landing and such, there's been a lot of uh, interest in the Omega Speedmaster, but there are quite a few very interesting pieces uh, that Omega made, and, um, well, they're known for the various uh, different types of uh, special editions, but this is a completely different watch. This is the Omega P Seamaster Polaris. This actually came out in two completely different variations. It came out in a steel version with um, a quartz movement, and this titanium version with an automatic movement. Now, uh, this inlaid gold is in both models. If you notice, it is not plating. It is literally a, like a two millimeter thickness uh, piece of gold inlaid into the titanium, you see? It's a real inlay. Now, um, I, I uh, had some friends who have guesses on how they did it, but uh, the general consensus in the industry is um, they're not quite sure exactly how uh, they pulled it off, especially with the two dissimilar materials, titanium and gold, work completely differently. Now, this watch came out in the mid-90s, and it's one of the lesser-known Gerald Genta designs. Uh, the uh, watch, like I said, came out in the 90s. There was also an Olympics version of it, which had uh, little Olympic symbols in gold uh, engraved into the, not engraved, but uh, stenciled or marked. I've, I've never seen the Olympic version in the flesh, so I don't know how they marked it with the Olympic symbols, but I would guess it was engraved and filled or could have been uh, some other type of um, logo. But the basic uh, Omega titanium, you know, let's see if we can zoom in on the uh, See, this is Omega Titanium Titan. Uh, I guess that's the French. Uh, basically, the uh, titanium watch to highlight the automatic movement. And it's actually got quite a few very nice features. It's a uh, 41 and a half millimeter case. And um, one of the nice things about it, and uh, very um, Daytona-esque aspect, it's one of the few... Omegas with uh, screw down pushers, you know. Um, in fact, the Seamaster looks like it has screw down pushers, but they're actually cosmetic. But in this one, the pushers actually are screw down uh, pushers. So it's a completely versatile diving watch. It's actually got 120 meters of uh, water resistance, and it's running the uh, caliber 1154. Omega caliber 1154 is actually the uh, value 7750, but it's a very good workhorse mechanism used by a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, companies. Um, nice little uh, back logo there. Omega, we don't have the um, Seamaster horse, interestingly enough, but it does give you the uh, water rating on the back and um, it's just a very nice legible watch for gray on gray it's v nice and legible and the loom is actually uh pretty good as well i should have done like a loom shot for you guys and gals out there uh but what i'll do is i'll if you ask me i'll put a loom shot in the uh photographs or what i'll do is i'll probably use a loom shot on the instagram post for this but i uh, just wanted to go over a very interesting uh lesser known omega seamaster like I said, it's um, a very good piece. It's in This one is in great shape. But uh, just to let you know that there are some interesting Omegas out there that, um, you know, go under the radar and actually have a lot of uh, both uh, horological and um, design history. I mean, considering this is an automatic movement from the 90s, they're fighting their... Uh, in a life battle with the uh, quartz crisis. And uh, they put out this really beautiful piece of um, very, very uh, classic yet avant-garde. I mean, this, this design is, um, you could almost wear it in a science fiction movie today. It's still a very futuristic design, although it is kind of also uh, a little bit dated because of its futurism. But it's just in all, it's just a very nice piece. The uh, Omega Titan Polaris 1990s, mid-1990s. So thanks for taking the time to uh, let me talk about this piece and uh, just, you know, show it off for the camera. Um, let me know if you have any uh, questions about it, and I'd be more than happy 
to answer them. Thanks for taking the time. This is Alex Paul for Talking Time Pieces.